In this lesson, we're going to start looking at how to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant or the KC value using the table method. You can see behind me over here, I explained the table method. Your teacher might call it ice, the ice table, the nice table, the mice table. This is what I call it. I will go through it in a second, but just note that in this video, we'll be going over a more basic example, and then I'll build up the difficulty throughout the playlist. Let's go. So when answering KC value questions, you might be required to work forwards or backwards. Those are more difficult, but these are a few things, a few guidelines, steps, if you will, that I follow always in my head to make sure that I'm doing the question properly. So firstly, make sure your chemical equation is balanced. It's very important for it to be balanced. If it's not balanced, everything will be wrong. Then I immediately write out my KC expression because that will get me one mark. And I draw my empty KC table, remembering to exclude solids and liquids from both the table and the KC expression. So we do not include solids. We do not include liquids. We only include gases and aqueous. Okay. Then I fill in all the given information, whether that is into my table or into the KC expression, I fill in what I was given. And then I start working. I work out all the different missing pieces. And what's key to remember is that the change in moles rho in your table works in conjunction with the mole ratio. I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to start off with a level easy example. And in this case, I actually have to give you a balanced chemical equation, which I've forgotten over here, but it's okay. I'll draw it in. So we've got hydrogen reacting with iodine. It says as a reaction proceeds, it reaches equilibrium. And then the product, and remember, they will give you this. The product is HI. They will also balance it for you. And to balance it, I need to put a two over there. Now, remember, balanced chemical equation is first. Then what I would do after my table, so I actually draw my table first and I'll explain how the table works and what goes into the table while I'm drawing this one over here. I call the table the mice cube table. So the mice cube, the cube because of the square brackets for concentration. Now, each of my letters stand for something different. You might call it the rice table. Maybe your teacher doesn't even use this first one. Maybe they just call it the ice table. Whatever you use, it's probably the same as mine. I just use slightly different names for it. So in my table, the M stands for mole ratio from the balanced equation. So when I do my table, I write my balanced chemical equation over here. And then what I do is I give each substance its own column. So what I mean by that is each substance gets its own column. So all the values for H2 will go in there. All the values for I2, iodine, will go in there. And all the values for HI will go in there. That's what I mean by each one gets its own little column. And then I draw in my rows. So remember M, that stands for mole ratio. Now this is very easy. The mole ratio is the big numbers here. This is why it must be balanced. It's a one to one to two ratio. One to one to two. Remember, if there's no big number, like here, there's no big number, it means that it's a one. So one to one to two. That's the M uh, row in your table, M mole ratio. Then I've got I. Now I stands for initial number of moles. It's very important to note that this is a mole table. So you can see that I is initial number of moles. C is the change in moles. E is the equilibrium number of moles. M is the mole ratio. The only thing that is not moles is my last row, which is concentration at equilibrium. And we know square brackets means concentration. Okay, so initial number of moles. Change in moles. Equilibrium moles. So I'll explain what that means now. And the square brackets means concentration. So when I say initial number of moles, that means the amount of moles that you have at the start of your reaction very important, at the start, then equilibrium is basically your final moles. And we don't say at the end of the reaction, that's why final is not really the right word, but it's when the system reaches equilibrium. What are your final moles or your moles when the system is at equilibrium? And your change in moles is basically your difference in moles. So think about it like this. If you start with zero and you end up with 10, that means that your change must be 10. Okay, you start with nothing, you end it with 10, it means that you gained 10 moles plus 10. Or let's say you, you started with 9 moles, you ended with 6 moles, your change is 3, negative 3, you subtracted 3 moles, you used up 
three moles. So that's what we mean by change in moles. Okay, so I draw my empty table. I'm going to fill in information here now. Then what I also do for the exact same example, so I do it at the end of the table underneath, I write the KC expression. Now remember, as said in my previous video, KC is equal to concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants, just like that. And if you take a look at your balanced chemical equation, you will see that HI over here, that's my product. So in square brackets, we're going to say HI. And the big number in front, the two over there, becomes the exponent, just like we did in the previous video. Then reactants, we've got H2 but there's no big number in front. So the exponent is basically an invisible one. And then we've got I2, also no number in front. So it's got an exponent of invisible one. You don't need to write the ones there. And remember, we're multiplying these two together. Then I leave that because I'm going to come and fill values in here later. And just so you know, so that you can link the dots together, the numbers that go into the square brackets, the numbers that go into the concentration brackets, that comes from the last row of the table. So it'll be whatever we have over here, those numbers go into the brackets over there. Okay, cool. Now, what do I do? I fill in my given information. So it says here, nine mole of hydrogen gas is placed in a 1.5 cubic decimeter container with nine mole of iodine gas. So now they don't use the word initial. They don't say at the start, but we have to read the question and understand that basically they're saying we start off with nine moles of hydrogen gas. So that goes in the I column over there. I, initial moles of hydrogen is nine and initial moles of iodine is also nine. Okay, so we fill that in. We fill that in. And then this piece of information here is giving me volume. It must be in cubic decimeters, which it is. And the volume is going to be important later on when we calculate concentration down here. Because remember, and I'll just write a formula over here, concentration is equal to moles divided by volume. So to get the concentration at equilibrium, to get the, these highlighted values over here, we are going to take the moles at equilibrium. So N, that would be your moles at equilibrium, very important, divided by your volume, okay, that's your volume in cubic decimeters. When you do that, you will get the concentration at equilibrium, which is your square brackets. Okay, so we know the initial moles of hydrogen and the initial moles of iodine. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool, but what about the initial moles of HI? Well, if you think about it very carefully, HI is a product. And when we start a reaction, you have hydrogen, you have iodine, you react them. So think about the beginning of the experiment. You take your hydrogen, you take your iodine. At that moment, in the beginning, do you have any product? Do you have any HI? It's kind of like when you're making a cake. At the beginning, you have the flour and the sugar and stuff, but you have no cake, you have no product. So it's the same thing here. In the beginning, initial, initially, I have zero product. So my HI is zero. And that will always be the case unless they say otherwise. Okay, so they will make it clear. Then if you carry on reading, they say the reaction proceeds until equilibrium is reached. At equilibrium, now here's your keyword. At equilibrium means that we are now looking in this row over here, this row. At equilibrium, 14 mole of HI is present. So at equilibrium, follow the E, 14 moles. Remember moles goes in the table, nothing else but moles. Now what I've done, they want me to calculate KC. What I've done now is I have completed step three, fill in all the given information and take note. I, again, I should have mentioned this and I didn't in the beginning. I'm just assuming, well, it does say hydrogen gas. So this is a gas, so it goes in the table. Iodine is a gas, it goes in the table. HI is also a gas, so it goes in the table. If any of those were solids or liquids, it would not go in the table at all. And it would not go in here at all. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we need to do is fill in the rest of the information. And this is like putting a puzzle together. So don't get overwhelmed. Just my big teacher tip is to start in the column. So when I say column, I mean these ones that go down like this. Start in the column where you have the most information. So you can see that I know the initial moles of HI and the equilibrium moles of HI. So I know the most information in this column. I'm going to start in this column. 
Then, as soon as you know your initial moles and your equilibrium moles, you can work out your change in moles. Now, this is the part that confuses most people. So listen up very carefully. If I start with zero moles, okay, so I'm starting, initial is zero. I have no product. Then at the end of the reaction, when well, not the end, when it's reached equilibrium, I have 14 moles. What was my change? How much did my moles change by? From zero to 14. So what happened? I added 14 moles. Okay, so I created, I produced 14 moles. And I'm just going to write that here just for your study purposes. I produced 14 moles. And just so that everybody can be clear, and this is not the answer to this question, but I just want to be clear. If we started with one, let's say, mole and ended with 14, then this would be plus 13. Okay, so you basically work this way. One plus 13 gives me 14. Okay, but remember in this case, we didn't start with one, we started with zero. So zero plus 14 gives me 14. And some students will ask me, ma'am, is it necessary to put the plus there? No, it's not. But I do it because it helps me understand something. And that is the following. Remember, we have spoken about the reaction and divided it into two pieces. These are the reactants. Okay. And this over here is the product. Now, if your change in your change column if your change is plus on the product side, remember, and I sometimes even tell my students to draw a double line here or a thicker line here in the middle to separate reactants and products. If your change is a plus over here for products, it's going to be a minus over here for reactants. And it makes logical sense. If we produce products, if we're making products, we plussing, we adding products, we are using up reactants, we are subtracting reactants, we are minusing reactants, which is why there's a minus here. So if this for some reason ended up being a minus, then this would be the opposite. Okay, but generally, this is going to be a plus. So the products are going to have a plus in the change row, and the reactants are going to have a minus. Now, you might think, okay, if that's plus 14, then is this minus 14? No, it's not necessarily the same. And this is where the following important golden rule comes in. And that is that the change in moles works by using the mole ratio. This is so important. And it's actually so important that I ask my students to highlight the following two rows, mole ratio and change. So what I mean by this is you can see over here that HI, okay, HI, to I2. What is that mole ratio? Look at the balanced chemical equation. HI has a 2 in front of it and I2 has a 1 in front of it. So it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So the change in moles works according to this mole ratio. So if my change in moles for HI is 14, then my change in moles for iodine will be seven. Why? Because it's a one to two ratio. So if it helps you to write it on the side, as I've done over here, then do that. But remember, it just works in a mole ratio. So how do you get from two to one? You divide by two. So that means I must divide 14 by two because it's a two to one ratio. So my change here will be seven. And again, this is a one to one ratio. Hydrogen to iodine, they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if this change is seven, this change is also going to be seven. Very, very, very important. Then what I do, remember to get the equilibrium row. Remember to get this one I worked down. So I said zero plus 14 gives me 14. You work down here as well. So nine minus seven, that gives me two. I say what I started with minus the change. Why am I minusing the change? Because it's reactants and reactants are used up. So 9 minus 7 gives me 2. That's where that comes from. And again, 9 minus 7 gives me 2. Now what I've got is my moles at equilibrium. I, in order to substitute it into the Kc expression and to get a value of Kc, I need concentration at equilibrium. Not moles at equilibrium, concentration at equilibrium, which is my final row of the table. Now remember, and I would do it on the side. You don't have to, but this just helps. To calculate concentration, remember we said we take our moles at equilibrium divided by our volume. So to get this value over here, we take our moles at equilibrium, 2, 
and we divide it by our volume, which is 1,5. Two, divided by 1,5. It's always your moles at equilibrium divided by your volume. So 14 divided by 1,5. And of course, you can work out what that is in the table. You don't need to leave it as a fraction. But sometimes it is easier to leave it as a fraction because, for example, 2 divided by 1,5 is 1,333 and recurring. So you can't round off because you're not at the end of the question. And 14 divided by 1,5 is 9,3333. So remember, you cannot round off because you're not at the end of the question. And then, like I said, once you've worked out the concentration at equilibrium, the blue row over here, you substitute those values into your brackets. So the concentration of HI at equilibrium, HI is the final one in my table, 9,3333333333 which I'm actually going to leave as a fraction, 14 over 1,5. You can also write it as the simplified fraction, but you can also do that. Don't forget to square it because that's what my formula basically says. This will get you your formula mark. Then divided by, now you can use round brackets because you're substituting the concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium, which is 2 over 1,5. And then the concentration of iodine is also 2 over 1,5. Remember, you are allowed to use round brackets because you're substituting. And these exponents here are both 1 because that, again, is what my formula says. When you type in this whole thing onto your calculator, you should get 49, which is a very large KC value. It basically just means that once equilibrium was reached in the system, there's a lot more products present at equilibrium than reactants. I know that that was a bit of a longer video. I hope that that helped you. In the videos to come, we're going to go over more complicated examples. So I'll see you then.